Uh, she's been doing all the, uh, working all the details with the students, uh, taking care of them, making sure that they're getting the support that they need with our counseling groups here on campus. Uh, next to her is uh, Dr. David Arnold. Uh, he's over our facilities, our campus steward, so he takes care of all the buildings and spaces here on campus. Uh, so he's uh, been working to make sure that coordinate traffic and whatnot on campus uh, the last few days. Uh, next to him uh, is Ms. Maria Duarte. Uh, she's our communications director. She's the one who helped set up uh, this here today and will continue to probably correspond with each of you as we provide updates uh, to the media. So that's just a, an amazing team. They've done an amazing job uh, here over the last uh, few days. Uh, our president, the leader of uh, the administrative group, Dr. Quint Thurman, uh, is actually in Lubbock with uh, the families of some of the students who are at the hospital uh, recovering. Uh, and he wanted uh, me to make sure that he, I also, on, on his behalf, told all of you thank you, not just to the media group here, but also our entire campus community, the Hobbs community, Lee County. I, we cannot express the extent to which the community has come together to support USW, the Mustangs, our, our students, faculty, staff. It's just been, I, these aren't the kind of things that you ever even dreamed of happening. They shouldn't happen. Uh, but the family here in Hobbs and Lee County um, have really come together to take care of one another. And he wanted me to make sure that uh, I, I reiterated that today. So he is actually over there with, with families as we speak um, this morning. Um, so to quickly kind of recap some of the things that you probably already know, uh, based off of reports from, from DPS and, and the, the groups that we've been working with, uh, NTSB, uh, Texas Department of Public Safety, over the last few days, uh, you know that there was um, an accident uh, with uh, one of our teams, our golf team, coming back from competition. Uh, Tuesday evening, Tuesday night. Uh, they were involved in a head-on collision um, uh, with an oncoming vehicle, swerved into the lane, uh, and um, resulted in a head-on collision, which, which then uh, created a fire and uh, resulted in some fatalities of uh, not, a, not only our students, uh, but also the drivers of the other vehicle. That information has been released by DPS, but just to kind of recap some of that, um, uh, from USW, uh, Tyler James, our golf coach, uh, male, age 26. Uh, he lived here in Hobbs. He uh, was part of our campus community. Uh, he did not survive the crash. Uh, Mauricio Sanchez, uh, male, 19 years of age, uh, from Mexico, one of our students, our golf players. Um, he did not survive uh, the crash. Uh, Travis Garcia, male, age 19. Uh, from Pleasanton, Texas. Um, again, one of our golf players here at USW did not survive the crash. Uh, Jackson Zinn, male, age 22, from Mes uh, Westminster, Colorado. Uh, one of our golf players uh, here at USW uh, did not survive the crash. Carissa Rains, uh, female, age 21, uh, from Fort Stockton. Um, again, one of our golf players uh, did not survive the crash. Uh, Lacey Stone, female, age 18, uh, from Nakona, Texas, one of our golf players. Uh, she did not survive the crash. Uh, Tiago Sousa, uh, male, age 18, from Portugal, uh, one of our golf players, and he did not survive the crash. Uh, Dayton Price, male, age 19, from Ontario, Canada, uh, one of our golf players, uh, did survive the crash, and he is undergoing medical treatment uh, in Lubbock uh, as we speak. Hayden Underhill, male, age 20, uh, also from Ont Ontario, Canada, one of our golf players, and uh, he did survive the crash, and he is uh, undergoing medical treatment in Lubbock. Uh, so a total of uh, nine occupants from USW um, in the bus, uh, seven of whom um, did not survive the crash, are deceased. Uh, two uh, students remaining uh, did survive and are receiving medical treatment in Lubbock. And so that's, uh, that's the information that most of you already know. Um, 
I, aside from that, I, I, all I can say is that as an institution, uh, we are a family here. Uh, and our family extends to our students and our faculty, our staff, but also the families of our students and our faculty and staff. And many of those families are watching right now. Um, I've spoken with all of them this morning, within the last hour. They're aware of this press conference. They're watching as we speak. Um, they, they know these details. In fact, they know more. They've known these details since Tuesday. Um, the one thing that we'll continue to do is we'll continue to communicate and, and speak with and comfort and support those families first. So if there's ever a delay in communications to uh, the media like this, it will only be because we are making sure that those families uh, receive that information first. So I spoke with all of them this morning and so they're supportive of this. They are, are watching this. They know these details. Uh, so we want to make, continue to take care of them because, again, we are a family, and that's, that family is growing uh, today. Um, all of us are Mustangs, and we're going to continue to uh, we continue to do that. Uh, as far as the community here in, in Homs, again, thank you so much to all of the, the organizations. We have local hotels. Uh, we have the airline group. We have restaurants. Uh, we have churches. Uh, we just have so many, and I can't name them all. There's no way I, that I could try to name everyone, uh, but they they have come together. They're, they reach out. We probably hear from somebody every half hour who wants to uh, support USW in some way. Um, we are directing that information through um, uh, Maria's office, uh, and she's uh, trying to put together a... Um, kind of a, a quick sheet, if you will, for some of those families in, in ways that they might be able to get some support as they travel here, uh, as they you know, make arrangements for the next steps. So again, thank you to all of the, the community. Thank you to everyone who has, has supported us, supported USW. Uh, thank you for being respectful. And um, we are going to, uh, you know, we're going to continue to come together and get through this. Uh, if, you, if you're around campus, you probably notice some, some banners that we have hanging up that have been here for years. Uh, and on, the, they, on those banners, they say, uh, must, USW Mustangs run as one. And it's no accident that that's our, uh, that that's our motto, um, because that's who we are. We are a uh, family of Mustangs. We run as one. We run together. And when one of us is hurting, all of us are hurting. Um, and that's what we're going through right now. So. Having said, having said that, I will uh, take some questions. I can't promise you that I have all of the answers, uh, but I can promise you that I will tell you what I, what I do know. So if anyone would like to ask a question, I'm happy to answer if I can. Yes, sir. Is there anything you can say about the current state of the two students who should be in the care of uh, I did speak with the president last night, and uh, they... They are recovering. They're making steady progress. Um, one of the students uh, is, is, is eating chicken soup. So um, spoke with the parents, and they are uh, they're there with them, and they are recovering every day. It's, it's a game of inches, uh, and you know every hour uh, leads to um, that one step closer to another day, which is one step closer to another week, month, year, etc. So. Um, there is no indication as to how long it's going to take, but they are both stable and recovering and every day making more and more progress. So we're happy with that. Is there anyone uh, who would feel comfortable just sharing um, how big a hole this loss leaves the, the campus here? I know that uh, there's several hundred students in a tight-knit community. Um, I don't know if you serve as the director of student life, uh, whoever feels most comfortable. Um, I mean, I think we can probably, at some point in, uh, in the future, probably have more of those personal stories, um, you know, in, in another venue. But I will say that we are, again, a family. And for any of you that have lost a loved one or a member of your family, it's the same feeling here. Um, they're not only students and coaches. They are loved ones to us. 
there are members of our family here at, on campus. I can't, you're going to hear that word over and over and over again. It's the Mustang family. We truly are a family. And when we lose, when we lose one, let alone seven, um, I mean, you can imagine what that's like if you were to lose seven of, seven of your family members in, in one accident. You can imagine what that's like. That's what it's like for us. Can you talk a little bit about what is being done to support the students here on campus and our counseling services? Absolutely. Since they were 15, but, and was school on spring break? Are there a lot of students currently on campus, or are there a lot of students away right now who are trying to deal with this, you know, home on spring break? Yes, and that's a great question. I'm glad you brought that up. We, um, we have an amazing crisis response team. Uh, we do have a campus counselor full-time that's always been here. Uh, we have a worship team. Being a private Christian university, we do have a worship team. Uh, they have responded. So in addition to that, I will say uh, thank you to the local schools, um, Hobbs School System, Ludmington School System, I think uh, JAL, Eunice, uh, all the Lee County schools have come together. They have a crisis response team, and I believe they even uh, had them on campus uh, yesterday, Wednesday, uh, as part of the chapel service that we provided. So um, we have an overabundance of, of folks just providing services, counseling, support, uh, spiritual support, emotional support to students. Uh, in addition to that, um, your second part of your question was spring break. Uh, so we do have a very limited number of students on campus right now. Uh, so it's a small group, and it's mainly those students, those, those athletes who were in competition, who were traveling. Uh, but we do have students returning this weekend. And from what I've heard from uh, Campus Life, those students are they're eager to come back. Uh, they want to be here to support their family. To them, to them uh, USW is, is a home to them, and the, their, their peers, their colleagues, or their family, and they want to come back. And uh, we'll be working with them next week uh, to coordinate a, um, an assembly of uh, some sort to uh, memorialize these students, but we want our on-campus students to be part of that to be part of the planning for that. So as we know more about that, we'll make sure that we share that information with all of you. I was going to ask you about that. I know that Mary yesterday, he was talking about having a vigil, or, or he really wanted to work with you all, have the city work with you all. Um, so that would be for the assembly or vigil or both? Uh, either or and both. Uh, and, and the reason I say that is because uh, it is important to us and it's important to our students that they are involved in helping plan and arrange that. To the, for them, that's also closure. And, you, you know, if you know any of our students, you know that they are um, very spirited and they are fierce and they want to not only come back and provide closure and arrange something like that to recognize and memorialize their family members, uh, their classmates, their peers, uh, but also begin the process of rebuilding. So, you know, if anybody's ever met any of our students on the court or on the field, you know that they're fierce and you know that they're um, going to want to uh, come together, regroup, recover, and uh, then rebuild. So they want to be part of that. We want them to be part of it. For the students who might be watching us or the family members, what's the bottom line? What message do you want to tell them? I... I I guess I would say that we're ready to have them back, and it is time to, to come together as a family and support one another and do what we, we know that we do, and that's run as one, because that's, that's who we are. That's what we do. Any other questions for me? I'm not sure how many of the students have coached personally, but there's, is there anything you can tell us about who they were as individuals and what kind of students they were? You know, I, I was reading some of their bios, and they all have diverse backgrounds. Students, uh, yeah. Again, I think I think we could probably look at uh, some time in the future after we've had a chance to kind of come back together, start looking at some of those personal stories. Then, I do know that our athletic director, uh, Coach uh, Steve Appel, he's traveling. Um, he did uh, provide some information for me, uh, but he would he and his athletics team and, and maybe some of our other folks here on campus and our faculty. Uh, at some point in the future would probably love to help tell some of their stories and experiences uh, as, as we move forward. Yeah. Uh, I, I have two different ones, but, uh, you know, I know you can't speak specifically, uh, but just what's the, the feeling here, you know, having, it's such a small campus, uh, so how are, how are you guys feeling here? Uh, 
I think the again that that loss um, of losing a family member. We're going through those uh, those stages of grief. I mean, we're we're dealing with it, uh, and we're making sure that our faculty and staff and our students deal with it. I will say that um, communicating with uh, the parents, the families over the last three days. Um, they're just amazing people. I mean, the families are amazing. Uh, they are uh, resilient. They are supportive. They love USW, and they know that we love them. And uh, every day, uh, again, is another step towards uh, recovering and rebuilding. That's what we're going through. Will this impact your, the, the way teams travel going forward? Uh, I don't. I don't. I don't suspect it will. Um, it it was a it was a traffic accident, um, and there is no uh, reading the Texas DPS report. I mean, even speaking with the the public information officer, the TPDBS, he told me he just said, Ryan, the truth is we may never know what caused this other vehicle to veer over into the lane, and um, I don't suspect that. Uh, a, a traffic accident that we can't explain would change the way that uh, teams travel. I just, I don't, I don't suspect that would happen. Dr. Tipton, I just have a few brief kind of facts to, to, to check sure. off of a broader question about okay. international students. Um, Mr. Sanchez from Mexico, Mr. Sosa from, from Portugal, can you share their, their hometowns? Uh, I don't have that here, but I can I can get that to you after the fact. Yes, yeah. Um, and then, what is the what is the enrollment of the school on campus and online? Total, okay. Uh, total student body uh, for the entire university, which includes our on-campus students, our online students, everyone, is about 1,100, 1,200 uh, students. Of that, uh, we have about 300 to 350 uh, students on campus. So. And then for the on campus and the online, what's just ballpark? What is the percentage international? Uh, okay. Um, I don't have that info. I can get back, back to it. We, we do have more uh, international students on campus, but we also have online students all around the world. But the, the percentage is, is going to be much larger for the, for the on campus group. I would say it's just a guess is probably around 10%, but I can give you a more specific number later if you want like that. Okay, yeah. so, so then just the, the broader question is, can you talk about the success of recruiting international students to the school? What's that due to? Is it, is it because of the sports? Is it because of um, Baptist networks in, in other countries? What... Uh, so for most of our on-campus students, I mean, we do have uh, an, an outstanding athletics group uh, with extensive connections uh, with their with their sports with their teams, and they do a just an, an outstanding and amazing job of recru recruiting a diverse group of students, and that includes uh, uh, those from other countries. So it's it's primarily due to our recruitment efforts of our, our athletic and coaching staff. So they do a great job at that. Or to ask it another way, what do you think draws students to come study in the I, I, again, I think it's that that network. Uh, they're they're attracted to uh, the the family environment that we offer here at USW, but also they have a very strong network within their sport and their um, that within again because part of their part of their sport is, is is being a part of a family. I mean, they develop that family environment, and it's what they get here, and they have close ties to their sport, to their families, and um, they. They just they fit right in at USW. They fit right in with who we are. So they they, they love it here and they become part of the family here. So. Um, Dr. It in addition to what we had just kind of spoken with the about the memorial service or the assembly, is that what you're referring no, to? Um, Oh, okay. Um, Sorry. Okay, like a dedicated space. I, I, we haven't spoken about that yet, um, but I'm sure that's something that will probably come up in the future. What have you thought about all the support you've gotten from all of it? Again, I, it's, um, 
everybody's a Mustang right now to us. Um, you know, we always talk about the USW family, the USW campus community being a family. I think for all of us, we just weren't aware of how extensive that family is and could be. Um, but that is something that we have, all of us have spoken about, just the outpouring of support from in our local community, uh, not only in our local community, but you know, all across the country, we have we have large organizations all, uh, just reaching out to us. What can they do to help? So uh, I think all of us have always been familiar with our community here and our family here. We just didn't realize how extensive that family really could be. Um, but to your, your first question, uh, for those of you that are f familiar with Hobbs and Lee County, you might remember uh, a couple, three years ago, there was an incident off campus. Uh, some of our students were in, at an event and there was a, um, uh, there was a shooting off campus uh, at a different location. Um, and some of our students uh, were uh, injured in it and we did have, there was a student who I lost his life and um, so that we have experienced loss before uh, and we have also had uh, a we had a staff member uh, a couple of years ago uh, who was killed in a car wreck heading home for Christmas break um, so we have experienced loss and I think that's how all of us here uh, are familiar with the how our family comes together during this now, obviously, this is um, an entirely different set of circumstances, a different time, different place, uh, and it never, it never gets easy uh, losing someone that is part of your family. Uh, but I, I do know that our family always comes through. And as far as, as far as uh, preventing things like this, you know, loss. Uh, of this type of you know accidents that you um, that we don't have any control over, I don't think that there's things that, there aren't things that we can do to prevent something like this, um, a traffic accident. Um, there aren't things that we can do to prevent something like this. I don't believe, but being a private Christian faith-based university, we also place our faith. Uh, in something bigger than ourselves, and that's what helps us heal. So, I think we'll continue to do that. What do you think you expand on the faith and family culture you guys have had on campus even before this week? Uh, well, yes. I mean, I mean that's part of who we are. That's our that's our mission. If you're familiar with the university, if you look at our mission, our mission is grounded in. Um, uh, the teachings of Jesus, the Word of God, um, belief in something more than just yourself, um, and serving someone, something more than just yourself. Uh, servant leadership is the core of who we are in our mission, and uh, we, we live that, we breathe it, and it's our students are here because of it, our faculty and staff are here because of it, and so helps us come together knowing that um, you know belief in God um, faith in God and in a higher power and in something believing in something and being part of something bigger than just yourself uh, helps us get through uh, something like this and our, our students know that our faculty and staff know that and that'll continue to be part of who we are um, Ryan, do you think that the intimate nature of the campus the small campus more close-knit than perhaps at a larger university. Do you think that helps? Obviously, there's no easy way to cope with something like that. But do you think it helps that um, coming together and coping a little easier isn't the right word, but I don't know the right, I don't know the right yeah. word. Uh, Absolutely. I, I believe so. Uh, um, everyone here, in, in our students, faculty, staff, and, and obviously the families of our mm -hmm. students as well, uh, know um, they knew it before, but they especially know it now that 
they're not alone. Um, they're never alone. Uh, you know, when you're a Mustang, you're a Mustang, and you know you're a Mustang for life, and uh, you're part of again part of something much bigger than just yourself. And and, and it does help knowing that they've got that supportive network and that they can reach out to anyone that they can they can walk into my office that knowing that the president of the university right now is is not you know here speaking to you he's actually over in uh, Lubbock sitting with uh, the families of the two that are um, being being treated uh, for for recovery right now knowing that that's the type of university that we are that we're not going to leave you alone that we do run as one um, does make it a little bit easier, I think, for lack of a better word. Do you think it impacts the campus and the students and the faculty a little harder than it would at perhaps a large university where people would be would tend to be more anonymous? Oh, you mean, yes, okay, you mean uh, knowing that we're such a tight-knit group. Well, yeah, obviously, I mean, losing a member of your family versus losing a, a complete stranger is, is, is going to it's going to be different, and here at USW there are no complete strangers. I mean, everyone's a fa everyone's a member of the family. Um, how can people send their condolences or Absolutely, and that's I'm glad you brought that up. So uh, there are, from what I've seen and heard, there are there are multiple GoFundMe uh, opportunities being set up by friends of of. Uh, some of the students, family members, and I absolutely, I think that's wonderful. I think that's, I think those things are great, and obviously I would never discourage, uh, you know, anyone from for wanting to do something to, to help. But I'll also say that as an institution, you know, we can't uh, police all of those. And uh, with all of those wonderful things that people do to try to help, there's also always the risk for um, uh, malicious activity for those you know, bad actors who don't want to act in the best interest of uh, folks that they know. But uh, the, the university does have one um, uh, victims fund uh, uh, page set up, uh, account set up that people can donate to. And that's the only account that we can officially endorse or say, you know, this is one that we know uh, that the university has access to that runs through uh, the institution that we can uh, promise uh, that, that that those monies are being used for the, the the family, and that is available on the website. And if you have more, if you want more information about where that is, Maria Duarte can pass that along to you. Yes. Have you spoken to the parents of the international students, and can you tell us about yes. how that has um, affected them since this tragedy has happened so far away from home? I've spoken with the parents of all of the students. In fact, I I just got the phone with. Um, all of them this morning, uh, right before the press conference started, including the international students, and they are—they're um, just amazing people. Uh, uh, one set, obviously, of, of, of parents is in uh, family is in um, Portugal, and one is in Mexico. And um, getting in touch in the beginning on a at uh, midnight on a Tuesday. Um, is a little challenging, uh, but uh, we finally got through and we we spoke, and that is one thing that they've said. We're so far away. We're so far away. Um, what can we do? And I've I've acted as liaison between them and Texas DPS to try to make sure that they know that sometimes the best thing that we can do right now is is wait because they want to be here. They want to do all of the things that they've got to do uh, to take the next steps. And because there is a process, there's a process for the investigation, there's a process for um, uh, the, the medical examiner's process, uh, sometimes it's a little bit easier to wait. So I am communicating with them um, you know, every day, two or three times a day. Uh, so I do think that, again, being small, uh, being a, a family uh, type of university that being able to communicate with me and the president directly, I think, makes that a little bit easier. Is there a message that you'd like to give those uh, communities that now may be looking, you know, in this direction because of what happened? 
I think just keep us in your keep us in your prayers. Uh, be thinking about us. Um, um, maybe hug the ones that you love a little bit tighter tonight, and uh, don't take anything for granted. But more than anything, just uh, keep us in your prayers as we recover. Any other questions for me, or any of the other team up here? Uh, anyone else on the team? I think I can speak freely for all of us. Uh, our church. Oh, sure. oh, I'm usually loud enough. Um, and you're not going to go away. Okay. Um, we trust. We trust him completely, and um, he has spearheaded this. And our institution is crushed and broken, but strong. And he has led the way. And that is why he is here and we are there. So he's answered your questions well. We appreciate you. I will say that um, the, the team at USW uh, that's, that's working through this, you won't find, I mean, you just won't find better people. You won't find a better team. Um, I, I had to travel back to campus. I wasn't on campus when I got the call. Um, so I got here uh, late last night and this this group here didn't didn't miss a beat they were i mean they were here all the way through they were supporting students all the way through they were working with you all the way through you just won't find a better and i don't even want to use the word team family a better family of uh, of people to to support our students through this and dr thurman our president recognizes that we spoke we were on the phone uh, for quite a while last night and he had the same thing he said he told me the same thing he said ryan USW, we have the most amazing team of people, the most amazing family of faculty, staff, uh, students. You just won't, you just won't find it anywhere else. Um, USW is, you know, is small, but it is the most special place that you know you, you'll find uh, for what we do. You just, you just won't play, find another place like it. And we're going to get through this. We are. So. If there aren't any other questions, uh, again, thank you all for your time. Thanks for being here. We'll continue to keep you informed of anything else that um, might come up. And, and when it's time to offer some more information, we'll sure do that. And that'll come from Maria Duarte's office. Uh, and I, I do have some cards here. Um, I'll leave them on the podium for you. Uh, so uh, it's got my, my office phone, my cell phone on there. So you, you're welcome to reach out to me anytime. And, um, we'll just take it one step at a time. All right. Can we just get, I know it's Paula, right? Yes. Yeah, can we get your complete name just so we have it? Sure. And your title. It's Paula Smith, and I'm the Vice President for Financial Services and CFO. Yes. And Smith's got that same one too. Yes, I'm very simple. <laughs> okay. All right. Thanks, everybody. Thank you. Yes, ma'am, thank you.